Eighth grade open up resources, illustrative mathematics, unit three, lesson six, more linear relationships. Problem number one, explain what the slope and intercept mean in each situation. A, a graph represents the perimeter Y in units for an equilateral triangle with side length X units. The slope of the line is three and the Y intercept is zero. I wrote the equation y equals 3x plus 0 to represent this situation. The x-axis represents the side length and the y-axis represents the perimeter. When the side length increases by one unit, the perimeter increases by three units. Let's put this information in a chart. The left column will be the side length and the right column will be the perimeter. When the side length is 1, the perimeter will be 3. When the side length is 2, the perimeter will be 6. And when the side length is 3, the perimeter will be 9. In this situation, the slope represents the sum of all three sides of the triangle. B. The amount of money, Y, in a cash box after X tickets are purchased for carnival games. The slope of the line is 1 fourth and the y-intercept is 8. I wrote the equation y equals 1 fourth x plus 8 to represent this situation. The x-axis represents the number of tickets sold and the y-axis represents the amount of cash in the cash box. At the start, when zero tickets were sold, there was $8 in the cash box. After one ticket was sold, there was $8.25 in the cash box. After two tickets, there was $8.50. After three tickets, $8.75. After four tickets, $9 were in the cash box. Here's a look at the line with one-fourth slope. I'll put a point in blue to represent one ticket sold, two tickets sold, three tickets sold, and four tickets sold. Those four tickets show a rise of exactly $1. Four units to the right and one dollar up. The slope of one-fourth means that each ticket costs a fourth of a dollar or 25 cents. The y-intercept of eight means that the cash box had eight dollars in it at the start. C. The number of chapters read y after x days. The slope of the line is three-fourths and the y-intercept is two. I wrote the equation y equals 5 fourths x plus 2 to represent this situation. With the y-intercept at 2, 0 days shows that 2 chapters are already completed. By the 4th day, 7 chapters are completed. Start counting the days at the y-intercept. After the 4th day, 5 chapters are completed for a total of 7 chapters. Here's a look at the line with a slope of 5 fourths starting at the y-intercept of 2. The slope of 5 fourths means that 5 chapters are read every 4 days. The y-intercept means that the first 2 chapters were read beforehand or were skipped. D. The graph shows the cost in dollars y of a muffin delivery and the number of muffins x ordered. The slope of the line is 2, and the y-intercept is 3. I wrote the equation y equals 2x plus 3 to represent this situation. The x-axis represents the number of muffins. The y-axis represents cost in dollars. The y-intercept could represent the charge for delivery. The slope represents the price per muffin. Notice at zero muffins, the cost in dollars is $3. That's the charge for delivery. Then the cost for one muffin is an additional $2, making the cost in dollars for one muffin to be delivered a total of $5. Then two muffins, the total cost would be $7. And three muffins, the total cost for delivery would be $9. There's the look at a line that would have a slope of 2 and a y-intercept of 3. Problem number 2. 
from 8th grade unit 3 lesson 4. The graph shows the relationship between the number of cups of flour and the number of cups of sugar in Lynn's favorite brownie recipe. The table shows the amounts of flour and sugar needed for Noah's favorite brownie recipe. A. Noah and Lynn buy a 12 cup bag of sugar and divide it evenly to make their recipes. If they each use all their sugar, how much flour do they each need? This means that they'll each be using six cups of sugar. Noah's graph shows us that he uses two cups of sugar for every one cup of flour. And Lynn's table shows us that Lynn uses three cups of sugar for every two cups of flour. The ratio of sugar to flour for Noah is two to one. Two cups times three equals six or six cups of sugar and one cup of flour times three equals three cups of flour. Noah uses three cups of flour for every six cups of sugar. Look at Lynn's table. Three cups of sugar times two equals six cups of sugar. So two cups of flour times two equals four cups of flour. For every six cups of sugar that Lynn uses, Lynn uses four cups of flour. B. Noah and Lynn buy a 10 cup bag of flour and divide it evenly to make their recipes. If they each use all their flour, how much sugar do they each need? 10 divided by 2 equals 5 cups, so each of them will be using 5 cups of flour and an unknown number of cups of sugar. Noah's ratio of flour to sugar is 1 cup to 2 cups. And Lynn's ratio of flour to sugar is two cups to three cups. One cup of flour times five is five cups, and two cups of sugar times five is ten cups of sugar. Noah will use ten cups of sugar for every five cups of flour. Looking at Lynn's table, I've decided to make it a little bit easier by using the ratio of one cup of flour to three half cups of flour. One cup of flour times five is five cups of flour, and three half cups of sugar times five is 15 half cups of sugar. And 15 half cups of sugar is the same as 15 divided by two, which is seven and a half or seven and five tenths. For every five cups of flour that Lynn uses, Lynn will use seven and a half cups of sugar. So Noah uses 10 cups of sugar and Lynn uses seven and a half cups of sugar. Number three, customers at the gym pay a membership fee to join and then a fee for each class they attend. Here is a graph that represents the situation. A, what does the slope of the line shown by the points mean in this situation? The horizontal axis is the number of classes and the vertical axis is the cost in dollars. The slope of this line means that the cost for each class is $20. B. What does the vertical intercept mean in this situation? In this situation, the y-intercept represents the membership fee. 